So was justice served and how are Jews around the world responding to Dumyanyuk's conviction? Rabbi Marvin Heyer is the dean and founder of the Simon Wiesenthal Center in Los Angeles and he joins us now from LA. Rabbi, it's, it's great to have you with us. First of all, just tell me if you will what your initial reaction was upon hearing this verdict. Well, <clears throat> first of all, initially when I heard that the court found him guilty and sentenced him to five years, I was elated and said, justice finally caught up with John Demianic. But when I heard that the judge decided, the presiding judge on behalf of the court, decided that he would be free, and then the judge went on to say he may, he may never serve because uh, the appeal would take over a year and because he's 91 and he has health issues, Therefore, he may never serve, which means that John Demianic, this is basically what happened in court. The court affirmed his guilt of complicity to the murder of 28,000 innocent civilians. And then the court said, you're guilty and now you're free. And if you can, you can go to McDonald's. In other words, he's a free man to live as every free citizen in the world lives. I think that's insensitive. That is not taking into consideration the feelings of the survivors because imagine the feeling of the survivors if a month from now a photograph is taken of Demjanic strolling in a park in Germany and they're saying to themselves, what about our families in Sobibor? I mean, this sends the wrong message. They should have at least said, we take into consideration you're 91 years old and you say you're not of good health. Therefore, the court sentences you pending appeal. It sentences you at least to house arrest, at least saying to him, Mr. Demianic, you're no longer free to do the things that you want to do. You have to pay. You're culpable and complicit in 28,000 in the murder of 28,000 innocent people. But by saying to him, he goes free. I mean, it's as if he has credit. I think it's highly insensitive and judging by the emails and the tweets and the uh, Facebook uh, that we've gotten at the Wiesenthal Center from all over the world, people are outraged in this decision of the court. But Rabbi, just let me um, stop you there because I thought it was inter interesting in the piece that we just ran before we came to you um, and we were listening to the words of uh, the daughter of a Sobibor survivor who was saying that you know what her mother would want to see is not jail time for this man because of his advanced years and his state of ill health but an admission of, of what he did, just to give some light as to what went on behind those walls and just to claim some responsibility for the part that he played in this. How widespread do you think that that view is, that a, an admission would be favorable over jail time? L let, me, let me say this. I think that there are few, you know, murder is something that didn't go away with the death of Adolf Hitler in the bunker. There are innocent people slaughtered and murdered around the world today. Now imagine, what is the message of the court? This is the message of the court. If you're a murderer and you're clever enough to hide out and you fake the story, wait until your old age, the court will say you're a free man and you'll never have to pay for your crimes. That's preposterous. I'm not saying that we should be vindictive and torture John Demianic. That is not what we're saying at all. What we're saying is balance the rights of a person who says he's in ill health at 91 years old with the rights of his victims and say to him, you can't live as a free man. Even while you're waiting for appeal, you're going to have to be under house arrest. But to say that he goes free the next day, I think is, it shows great uh, you know, lack of compassion to the victims of the Holocaust. Now, Thomas Blatt, one of our survivors who was at the court and who went there to the trial, he was outraged. He could hardly contain himself today about the feeling about the decision of the court because they feel they've been ignored. Rabbi, I appreciate uh, your time on this and for, uh, for giving us your insights. Thank you very much indeed. Rabbi Marvin Hyder.